Hi guys, how you doing? So this is the first ever Property Sourcing Network podcast. This is something that we decided we were going to do at the start of the year um, after a few minor mishaps. I know. <laughs> no table, no chairs turned up, no camera lenses. Hi. We've been trying for a few weeks anyway. We're here now, so a bit of an intro for myself. For those that don't know, my name's David Smart. I've been... Um, <laughs> that table's taking a bath. <laughs> Fucking okay, first podcast, aye. right? Ordering our cable, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've been in property for <laughs> since, since since October 2020. Um, done multiple uh, flips, assisted sales. I've done a commercial residential. Worked with multiple investors. Raised, raised hundreds of thousands of pounds. Um, but bread and butter has always been the sourcing. Always property sourcing for day one. I'm, I've got this weird thing with cash flow where I'm, I say this to you all the time. And I say, I think I say to you, Cameron, like I'm fucking addicted just to having cash flow, having that recurring income coming in all the time. So for me, it was just a kind of light bulb moment that sourcing was going to give me that income to make me go full time. So I was working offshore and uh, quit offshore, went into the shipyards, done the shipyards weekend shift, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 12 hour shifts, and then done my property stuff Monday to Thursday. Uh, and that just kind of helped me accelerate, get to where I wanted to go and get full time, essentially, in, inside eight months. So, um, yeah, sourcing was, was a catalyst to all that. So that's just a kind of, in a nutshell, intro to me. And as I say, ever since uh, three and a half years now in property, I've got my sourcing business is, you know, where it is. It's, it's doing really well at the minute. I've got um, Alex in there and I've got Wojciech in there. I've got, also got my home improvement company now and my lighting company offering a kind of full end-to-end service. That's just the route that I decided to go down. Um, and obviously now we've got the property sourcing network, so... Yeah, exactly. So, obviously, it feels weird sitting in a, an empty room talking about yourself, doesn't it? But um, Matt Morrison, um, yeah, I left school at 16, very little qualifications, didn't really have any idea what I was wanting to do. Um, landed a modern apprenticeship at the Scottish Government when I was in Magaluf with my pals. Seen the email come through and I was like, fucking yes, that's me out of school, come on. Worked there three and a half years, um, lost my dad through that. Got a little bit of inheritance money, um, not a million pounds, but enough to do something with. <laughs> and just basically realised, like, what, what am I going to do that means I don't have to go and be chained to this desk for the rest of my life? So left that, started learning about property, um, and just really never looked back. Had a couple of shitty jobs, warehouses, door-to-door sales I'd done, a bit of labouring, um, and then because I stayed at home and had like, a, my only expense was a BMW one series on finance, it was like 250 quid a month, um, just went all in on property. So I had quite a lot of success early on with rent to SA sourcing, as mm. you know. Aye, um, aye. Sold well over <clears> 100 <throat> rent to SA deals in Edinburgh, Glasgow and a couple in Newcastle. Um, when I think I was about 19 at the time, or 19 touching 20. Um, made really good money from the get-go and I was thought I was a fucking millionaire. was going on holidays, buying cars, bought a hot tub. Up. I know. <laughs> 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 And uh, just fucked it up, basically. That that business didn't end too well because of the new licensing scheme. Um, but luckily, I was always doing sort of traditional property sourcing at the same time, which is what totally saved me. So when the SA Service Accommodation Licensing Scheme in, came in Scotland, I just put, completely jumped ship and went all in on off-market property. So since then, you know, I've done well over 150 off-market deals, doing deals every single week at the minute. Um, I've bought and flipped you know, numerous properties now, 100% investor funded, raised well over half a million pounds in the last 12 months. Um, obviously, David and I have just um, you know, started this property sourcing network about seven months ago. I launched the estate agency uh, part of the business um, because I was passing a lot of properties to other estate agents and getting a commission. Um, and what I realised is we could do this a lot better if I just kept it in-house. As a compliant property sourcer, you are an estate agent, aren't you? Yep. So we decided to keep it all in-house, got right move, got a member of staff in there running most of that now, uh, which in the last few weeks has been going really, really well in terms of getting new stuff in. Um, and it gives you that flexibility about buying stuff, listing it yourself and the back end of <coughs> right move and stuff like that. So um, it's working really well. And then, as we said, we've been doing this property source network for, what, maybe nine months? Aye, about nine months or something. Nine right? months. Originally wanted to to um, get 20 people in a group, 
um, and teach them Remember about that sourcing. Conversation? Crazy man. Isn't if you it? get 20 or 30 people in the group, you know, and we just, it's a little bit of education, people out and about sourcing, we're all, we're all doing deals together, obviously bringing us deals to sell to our mailing lists. And that just kind of came and went. Totally. Yeah, rapid, just didn't like it? that, didn't it? And then we closed reason. the doors and changed track slightly in terms of what we wanted to do. Got this big fancy website built and decided to rebrand. <laughs> <laughs> fucking terrible. Bought hoodies and all that and then had to swap it around. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do you want to just touch on, because obviously this is the first podcast. Aye, that's what I was going to do. There'll be loads of people that don't know us, don't know anything about us, probably don't care about us. Right. Um, but so... First of all, I just want to touch you. You're probably looking the now and going like, where the fuck are they? Do you know? He's <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of a building site. Um, just a quick intro to where we are. This is one of my projects. We will talk about this a little bit more in depth later on, but um, this is going to be the sort of essence of the podcast. We're calling it the PSN Pop-Up Podcast, so we want to get out and about. We don't want it to be a traditional, typical podcast that everyone else sort of does. Nothing wrong with them, obviously. They're really good. <laughs> I feel like everybody's got a podcast. <laughs> yeah, everyone's got a podcast, you know I mean? so it's just about... I think in this industry, it is just about being different in every sort of aspect of the business to, totally. to make yourself stand out. So um, that's the idea with this podcast, that we just, you know, we go to different projects. This is one of my projects. We'll go to Matt's projects. We'll go to members' projects. We'll go to external projects, people in our network that we know, and try and get good guest speakers and stuff like that and make, it quite, um, make the content really good as well. Totally. So um, that's where we are at the minute, but we'll, we'll kind of talk about that as well. But, yeah, just in terms of... PSN, so you crack on with that, Matt. Yeah, so Property Sourcing Network, as I say, we started it nine months ago. Um, David and I had David come out to one of my flips in Livingston. Um, when, what, what month would that have been? Last year at some point? I don't know. <sighs> Must have been around about this time last year, eh? Was it? And decided to do like a, what we called a sourcing mastermind at the time, um, just as a way to get access to more property deals. Um, for our clients, obviously, we've always bursting at the seams with investor clients that are desperate to buy stuff. <laughs> Um, so we decided to do that and then we just launched it and we originally called it Sourcing Network Scotland, um, which we, we know we, we had quite a lot of success on early doors Then we closed the doors um, and they opened it back up and rebranded it as Property Sourcing Network. So in a nutshell, I think at the minute we're floating around about 150 members. Aye, aye. Something like that. And, and basically what it is, is a community of kind of like-minded property people, um, all different kind of stages of property, people that are brand new, people that are doing a lot of deals every week. We've got estate agents, we've got, you know, brokers, we've got solicitors in the group, with loads of wealth and knowledge, people that are buying stuff, investors, people that are in the group purely just to buy deals from other sources in the mm -hmm. group. And then we've got people that, that's been really inspiring, actually, to see them come in I've never done a deal before to some people in the group recently, you know, absolutely she, flying. She just like, 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 like Lucas and Rio now as well. Totally. That's, that's who comes to my head I now. Know. But there's yeah. been loads of people like that. Like, like Mark Riley, for Mark example. Riley, I mean, loads. I'd done three deals in three weeks with Mark Riley at the tail oh, end yeah. of last year. Like, so. See, these are Lucas and Rio work together. Mark Riley works himself. But there's, there's loads, like, there's, there's probably too many to name, but they're just a couple recent that popped to mind. Totally. And it's like, never done a deal when they came in. And now I think they've done, well, because we've done four or five, five deals last that month, month or something. Well, you know, so so it's, and again, that's nothing to do with us. That's just, you know, hopefully we've had a very small impact on, on them. Do you know what I mean? It's obviously their hard work that's, that's yielding the results. Aye, aye. Basically, the group's an education-based group. So, you know, we've got a WhatsApp chat that's, you know, active as anything 24-7, you know, most days of the week, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so there's lots of things. We've got a question and answer chat. And as part of that, so people come in, they ask questions, and it, you know it's not the David and Matt show. There's lots of people in there that are that are more experienced than you and I, David, probably, um, in, in some aspects that, that are answering questions. So you get lots of different points of view. Mm -hmm. We've got a private Facebook group where people are posting wins and we post the events and stuff like that in it, um, and we do a bi-weekly call every two weeks on a Thursday night. Um, we'll do like some kind of training topic. You know, we get lots of guest speakers in. There's lots of people in there that that, that have came in from our networks that are crazy experienced. You know, land planning, auctions, aye, aye. all these kind of people. Um, we've got a good friend Joseph Tot coming in um, on Thursday to talk about service accommodation, and the thought process behind that is just giving people a rounded overview of the property industry. So obviously, are predominantly sourcing. And anything that we don't know, we're not experts in. We don't speak about, we just get people in that are doing that day in, day out to, to come and educate the group. Um, and obviously we do kind of bonus content and stuff like that, which all gets uploaded to our private members site. Um, and everything's in there. Do you know what I mean? You can log in 24 seven, the comfort of your own home, watch all the calls back. Someone joining today has got like nine months worth right. of calls they can watch That's back on. So, so one much of the major, content. major benefits of the group really that, 
the calls. I've been in previous masterminds where you get on the call, if you miss it, you miss it. But we made a decision to record every call because the amount of... We talk, me and Matt touch on topics when we're, when we're not got a guest speaker in, and it's always something educational, something from our experience that we know know something that we, we talk about and we don't know or we'll just try to make up on the spot. It's from our experience of doing this shit. So, um, I, it's mega... Mega I just, I think the property kind of education space is changing, I think, do you know what I mean? Like, if, if you think about even just a couple of years ago, like when we first got started, there was only really a couple of different options you aye, could aye. go down, particularly in Scotland, not so yep. much down south, whereas now there's loads of different ways to get involved for, for low cost. I mean, if you think about, you know, Mark Riley, for example, he's paying, you know, the monthly subscription, which at the minute is £69 a month. Mm -hmm. um, he, those three weeks, he's probably made minimum five grand off doing deals with me. So yeah. if he's, do you know what I mean? That's him for a good few years anyway mm -hmm. of subscription money. Do you know what I mean? Like the return on investment you're getting for coming on board, working with us, we can show you how to structure deals, what deals actually sell. You've got access to all of our invest, investor databases as well, which we've not really mentioned. Like no, no. what we're sitting about 15,000 investors between yeah. us. Yep. And that's frightening. Do you know what I mean? Like how many. How you just have to get in front of the right eyeballs. If uh, the biggest challenge for people in sourcing, I think, is 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 well, for my for me anyway, was investors. Like the deals are hard to find, but when you're first getting started, you're like, oh, who's going to want to work with me? You yeah. know, I'm I've not got any money. I've not got any experience. How am I going to find these people with all this millions of pounds to invest in property? Um, which is obviously not the case. We don't know, but um, that's one of the massive kind of benefits of the group is working with you and I, isn't it? Aye, let me, let me tell you a funny story about Mark Ray. <laughs> the latest deal. Yeah. So, but this deal that me and Mark done together was, um, it, could it, it's probably a flip actually, it would be a really good DRR and, oh, where is that again? Bank, bank head or something like that, I can't remember. But anyway, the, the one, uh, where is that? It's suiting, uh, I can't remember. Down but, no, it's suiting like Falkirk Way and all that, right. something like that. But anyway, um, Sourced this. Somebody on my mailing list, Mark brought it to me. Somebody on my mailing list, we put it on, right? And uh, they, they, they bought it, they're inquiring. I've never met this guy. So I've learned a lot of lessons for this, actually, but I've never, I'd never met this guy. So they're based down in London. And they, they ultimately went on to buy it, right? But they asked that they could pay half the fee uh, up front, which was fine, and half on completion, which I normally do anyway, right? I, I, think I mentioned this, right? And then uh, so basically what's happened is played half the fee. The, the deal's completed in November, December time. And he's not paid the second half. Right? <laughs> so it was fifteen hundred pounds up front and then fifteen hundred pounds at the end. So <laughs> from November to December, I'm like, right, where are you paying it? Where's the money? When when we're getting this, you know, when are you paying your next he's like, oh bro, bro, I'll get it to you, bro, and all this, right? Fuck I'm like that, right, this guy's a bit of a character. So <laughs> I phoned him from my second phone one day and I caught him off guard and I'm like, mate, when are you paying this? Like, I've got somebody else I need to pay and stuff. Like, this isn't how you, you operate. And he's like, ah, oh, bro, I'll definitely get it to you. <laughs> so he's giving me all the part. So of. you've swallowed the so first then, half of the fee and poor Mark's running away with no money. <laughs> <laughs> and then, no, I get this, this. So I'm, I'm, I'm at him constantly. Like, this is unacceptable and all that. And I've never, ever had to do this. I never wanted it. But I threatened him with social media. Right, for the sake of 15 hours, I was like, ah, listen, this is the order, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it to social media just to try and see if it sparked a reaction, right? So, the other day, so this has went on now, it's March. So, this, this last week, this went on, so the end, of, the end of February, this has been going on since then for two, three months, right? And uh, I think Mark turned around the other day, and like that, by the way, I think we, we reduced it, we reduced the fee to 2,500. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, Oh fuck, did we? That rings a bell. And then we found screenshots, man. And it's like, uh, it's like, it looks quite quite likely that I've reduced it to 2,500, right? Because I mentioned it in the screenshot. And then it all came back to me, man. I've, I've, I've spoke to this guy on the phone. He's like, oh, like, listen, can we do this? It's just really tight. And I says, like, we'll reduce it to 2,000. But I've totally forgot about it. So I've been chasing this guy for this extra bit of money. So well, he, he, eventually money paid, he eventually paid 1,000 pound it, right? So you're not doing Three it. weeks ago. <laughs> And I'm like, the other 500, this is out of order, I want the other 500 and stuff. And he's not even due it. I wasn't even due it. 
<laughs> oh, mate. Well, you you know, I was just laughing at there is I was giving it this spiel before about the property sourcing network and all that, and you said specifically that we're not going to use our work voices, and I'm giving it the big one of it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Trying to be more casual, and I'm sitting like, pure, like a news presenter up right like that. <laughs> But uh, no, that's Aye. funny. So mate. Where, maybe where, where I, we know? I, I've never had Aye. any issues with people not paying me. Actually, I, I, I normally just take my fee at the end most of the time. But you? You, well, you, my buyers are all people that I've worked with before most of the time. Um, so I, I, I need you, man. So I get guys like this that I've never met before. Totally. So why why did we start the podcast then? Do you know what I mean? We're, we're doing all this stuff. How the fuck have we got time? And, and why are we starting the podcast? <laughs> I've, I've not got time. <laughs> We just try. That's why we're doing it on a Saturday. We decided we'll do it on a Saturday because Aye. it's the only time your phone's not going. Yep. You know, no distractions basically. So, so I, and see, I, I was saying this. Obviously, we've both been on a couple of different podcasts, haven't we? Like, whenever you do them in the afternoon, like you've been working all day, oh, yeah. fucking WhatsApps pinging, like you just can't, you can't focus on it. Whereas oh, you come out here on a Saturday morning, it's blue skies and lovely Ayrshire, and. Um, <laughs> And uh, you can just crack on. It's fresh, isn't it? Aye, aye, hundred percent. That is fucking fresh. I think it was. Baltic. We probably at the end of the last year d- didn't expect we were going in. And typical is we we talk about something once and we think fucking great idea. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it now. Aye. It has to happen tomorrow. So We've got that, a camera on Amazon much. ordering all the shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a fortune on it. So hope this works out the first one. But um, aye, I, I'm 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 buzzed about it. I think it's it's good fun. Sorry, do good fun. So it'll be good content for us. It'll be good. So, hopefully help a lot of people that maybe don't know us exactly. people that do know us as well you know so and, and that's it and, and we said um, we just want to do something different so which is why the pop up thing I'm sitting in David's well, project sit now we'll go and do one of my projects we'll get members that are doing stuff on the calls we'll get people from our network on, on the podcast sorry and um, just make it completely different to anything yeah, else that's yeah, out so there because there is so many people doing podcasts and stuff like that now right. and you see them on like your TikTok and that and you're like who the fuck is that and what oh, are they yeah. talking about no, do you know no, what I mean no. so no. I think um, hopefully it should be good aye been good so property sourcing network this year then what, what's happened since the turn of the year what have we been up to so in terms of PSN aye so I think what, what, have we t- spoke about the 40 members and stuff 40 no. members and stuff no, so no. Um, I, I think we're touching on or just over 40 members yeah. new f- from January so that takes us um, to about 150 I've run about the 150 mark we ended the year quite strong I think run about that anyway so we obviously took Cameron on as well who's behind the cameras here um, we are now going to we've got our first event booked but the venue will be confirmed on Monday uh, so that will be the first networking event really look forward to that I think there's going to be quite a good amount of members coming to that um, and then we're going to open it up to some of the public as well uh, so yeah, we look forward to that, and then obviously later on in the year we're probably looking at the sort of um, intensive course, aren't we? Yes, I think that's the route that we're going to go down. So as David said, we've had quite a good start to the year actually. Obviously Cameron's come in; he, he's doing all of our marketing, all of our social media stuff. He's behind the cameras now on the podcast, and um, it's made a big difference, hasn't it? Because mm-hmm. before, I mean, awesome. think about the social media content we were putting out before, like fucking PDFs with, with <laughs> chat GPT content. Wow. Mate. So we've uh, we've come a long way. It's only been two months. You always do that, or you always look back and go. Oh, that's cringe, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you always do it. We'll probably look back on this and cringe. What you think is it? But the, the group's growing. The group's brilliant. The feedback's always phenomenal. We we do like a cancel any time contract. So for people coming in, there's no real risk. Nice like, like contracts, just if, I cancel if, any time subscription. If, if someone's not getting value from it, you can just cancel it, and there's there's no hard feelings. And we do get some people that leave, but we, we don't right. get that many, um, just because the group's so 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 good and there's so much valuable content. I think it's but just the price point as well. Like we set it at a price point where everyone can get involved, and totally. it's, it's a brilliant network, eh? totally. And obviously we, we, with the online course as well. So we. we we launched that as well, just yeah. as a, a kind of different avenue to help yeah. people get started, really, didn't we? So, I mean, that's a fraction of the price that you would pay anywhere else for that kind of material, right. isn't it? So it's like, what, 12 hours of content, 12 plus, how yeah. to source properties, how to find investors, how to structure deals in, in clever ways and make good money. We've got guest speakers, we've got a solicitor in there, we've got a state agent, mortgage broker giving some kind of advice on working with them, refurbs we touched on. Mm-hmm. Um, and the feedback on that's been great as well, isn't right. it? For for the price point again, I think we're underselling ourselves here. Do you know what I mean? But um, it's a, the, the 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 course thing is is quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, aye. Um, it's good. It was 
It's actually good fun filming. It was a lot of time, a lot more totally. time than I so, thought it was so going much. to be. Yeah. Cost a fortune but, as well, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just seems to cost a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, no, <laughs> bankrupt through PSN. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, the networking event on the 13th of April as well. So we've got tickets live for that, don't we? Yeah. So people can, can go on and buy right. them again, low cost ticket. Eventbrite. Oh, like Eventbrite. Eventbrite. Aye, so people can log in. Um, I think the, the funniest part for me this year so far is since we've launched all these Facebook advertising campaigns and the, the meta ads, mm -hmm. like I've been going into the Sunbed shop and that and the, you know, the girl behind the thing is saying, oh, I've seen you on my Facebook and that. I'm on the phone to Cameron. I said, Cameron, obviously our target is not working, mate. Let's try to sort this out. <laughs> but it's, I, mean, I had a guy in the sauna at, at my gym the other day. says, oh, I've seen you on my Facebook, some kind of property stuff. And you know, it's like... You're like, what? Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a bit awkward. Feel but famous? I totally, mate. That's <laughs> it. Um, nah, it's a bit, it's just different, isn't it? You just don't oh, expect yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? So, but at the same time, it, it works and it's, it's just, just getting new members in and That's everybody's kind of kind of benefiting from it. So yeah, exactly. it's um, it's been really good, but it's definitely been a, a big shift. So just on, on our own years so far, then what, what have you been up to so far this year? So been a bit, uh, bit manic this year, actually, in a good way. I, I did think the papers. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> yeah. I did think it was going to be a, a good year for investors slash sources, really. Um, I've been saying it for long enough, actually. I've been saying it to all my clients. Like I, I expect this year to be a really good year. And it's, so far, it seems like it's turning out that way. So we've got 18 deals in convention uh, for clients this year so far. So we've done, we done our best month ever in January. We followed that up with probably our second best, best month. Best month in terms and of just in terms of getting deals into convention. So sold deals. Aye. So I think we get um I think we get twelve and they went down to ten because two pullouts. Um and then it's we get eight enough. eight this month, I think. Maybe nine actually, nice. maybe nineteen. Um so yeah, nineteen, eighteen, nineteen deals. It's brilliant. In convention. Right? Listen, I think the, the law averages will tell you that they probably won't all. That's just what happens in sourcing, you know, for one reason or, the, or another. That's how it's always important. We were talking about the other day, just to be touching base with, your, with the solicitors, with the clients and stuff like that, with the of sellers, course. with the buyers, and just making sure everything's moving smoothly. Because with that amount of deals and conveyancing, it's easy just to... I'm quite big on, you know, sourcers just need to stick to their job and do what they're good at and find the next deal. But you do still need to have that element of sort of care throughout the process and making sure it's all... If, if they... If the communications break down, then that's when it can. I actually think down it, sometimes. I think that's probably you know just equally as important as as, as finding new deals, as making sure the ones yeah. you've done the work for go through. Yeah, like, go through exactly. So we've got quite different businesses, don't we? In terms of you're more kind of volume, volume right? and and I'm kind of lower volume. But I was thinking the other day when we were speaking about it, like I'm I'm doing less deals than you, right? Quite a lot, but I, I'm kind of lucky. Work with good buyers and structuring things and and and, and doing doing well still. So. I was thinking though, if if I do get a deal that falls out of bed, I'm fucked, am I? Because like that, do you know what I mean? Because like you've you kind of de-risk it by I, the fact you've got like eight, 19 deals yeah. to convince. I don't even know how many I've got, but it's not as much as that. Yeah. Um, but obviously with the estate agency, it's a little different because we're, we're pulling decent fees exactly. out of that as well. So that should give me more volume, mm -hmm. um, but hopefully with kind of less less risk, I think. But I'm really lucky. I hardly get any deals that fall out of bed at all. Aye. And I think it's just because I'm just relentlessly on the phone to everybody involved, just aye, making aye, sure. Aye. Phone the buyer, phone the seller, solicitors, anybody else involved in the process, I'm on the phone and I'm saying what's going on and then just updating everybody. Mm -hmm. And see, to be honest, like if you set up your business properly and you're really organised and you're efficient, it's a massive part of your day because sometimes it's not that busy. If mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like we're really busy because of all the different things we do. But if you think about just a standalone sourcer who's sourced a couple of deals, what is there to do except for find new deals and make sure the ones you've got in conveyance are going through? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's one of the weird businesses where like putting in a lot of hard work doesn't always correlate to how much money you make. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because if you just if you're clever and you structure things and you get lucky sometimes with buyers, I mean, that one in Birdie House that I complete yesterday, that was the same buyer that bought bought my other one, mm -hmm. um, just through right move and then yeah. just spoke to the guy on the phone and that and then he bought another one. So it's um it's been good, but yeah, it's, it's one of those weird businesses where, like, you know, like if you're like a tradesman, definitely. Or, That's how we were saying to Alex yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. One of Alex is doing two one moves, uh, and we were saying that the time you, you you will be busy doing the viewings and everything like that. But if you've got time to learn sort of marketing, to do marketing yourself, that's a crucial skill that you can learn that's going to stand you in good stead going forward for you and potentially for others. You can monetize others by doing their ads or whatever. So, um, aye, interesting, interesting yeah. point. So you, you've done 19 Eight, 19, 18, 19 in convention. 
had about seven or eight completions, um, were in legals for a property in Glasgow that's just head to toe in beer beer boxes and beer bottles. So I've showed I've showed the group this this one uh, this property before. Basically, in the door, you can't even get the door open that much because there's just crates of beer all over the full house. You're actually standing and standing on them in the hall. You can't get in the living room because they're all stacked up. <laughs> You've got a route up the stairs with those crates, like all the way up the Is left. Somebody living in it? No. No. Nah. How long for ten years? Ten years, aye. So it creates all the way up the left, so you can just slip through, you know, the other side of the stairs, and you, you manage to get up the stairs, and you can crawl about, you can crawl about, <laughs> but you can, <laughs> you can kind of climb about the, the rooms a little bit. But <laughs> the funny thing about that is, which I've still not got to the bottom of, there's only one obvious reason: like the, the liquids evaporated Has and the beers. It's like the, the lids are still on; they're untouched. Some of these, some of these beer bottles. And it doesn't need liquid in them. But it's crazy. What, I, don't, I don't know if that can be right, mate, because why would somebody just have like fucking hundreds I don't of crates know. I can't, of full I can't beer he, in their house? I can't he actually. I reckon the guy must have. Just, for he him? must have took them off, drank them, and then just. He must have a way of putting it back on, I think. But some of the crates are like literally. But the, the cardboard's that, untouched. That must be a sting, though. He must just sling them out. Because why would you have. That, that would be a fortune worth of beer. All the bottles, no. if they were. If they were I don't know. I don't know, but on, 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 that on. one's inconveniencing anyway. Aye. So we've got that. Hopefully. How did you get that one? Decent. Um, that was through somebody that, I, that reached out to me two years ago, um, and it was I basically they just they, they told me about the guy who's wanting to sell, but he couldn't really be arsey and he couldn't be bothered with all the hassle. Property was just sitting there doing nothing, and then unfortunately this guy's had quite a bad accident where he's lost his leg. God. Um, so he's now in a position where. He needs to sell, and I was kind of the first person that he thought of. So that's it in a nutshell, really. Um, and now we've obviously got the offer in, and it should complete hopefully in two, two, two to four weeks. It keeps getting delayed because of, of something else. It's no point in getting into it. But aye, we, we should get that one over the line, no bother. That'll be a good one. Cool. We're in convincing for the Johnson deal, Yep. Um, sourced by Rio in the group, who brought it to myself. I had a look at it. Looked like a really good one, albeit it's quite tight. It's still definitely going to be a really good deal, I think. Um, so you can talk a bit about that as well. And for me, uh, the assist, I've got an assisted sale agreed cool. yesterday, nice. pretty much, in Glasgow. And that, that's through a new member of the group who, I, who I've known for... Am I getting a car for that, then, I take it? No, absolutely not. <laughs> 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 that's through somebody that I've actually known since for two or three years now, Ikra. Um and I've met our business partners and stuff like that, and his property's been sitting there on the market, not getting any viewings. Um, his had viewings, sorry, not had any sort of serious offers. I think there was one maybe fell through, if I remember right, but I just nothing really happening with that one, so it's pretty desperate to sell, and I agreed a price that's going to work well for an assisted sale. I'll go and basic refurb in that one, get it back on the market, and hopefully make a good return out of that. And then Kilmore's, this one that we're in the now, which obviously we're going to speak about. Yeah. What about you? I so as I said, I'm like kind of less volume transactions than, than you in terms of sourcing. I, I probably should have had the information in front of me. I don't know how many deals I've got in conveyance and I've got a very, very busy March. I had a really, really good January in terms of money in. Um was really, really happy with how much money we made because I had a really good December. Um, so done really well in January, but I was I was also quite a slow month in terms of selling new stuff. Mm -hmm. So like it took me probably like three weeks or so, maybe more than that, of the month before I'd sold anything this year. Um, so I was getting a bit nervous about it. I was like, what's going on here? But it just happens, doesn't <laughs> it? So done, yeah. obviously the falling effect of of not having a like over Christmas. There's probably six weeks or something there where I've not sold a deal between right. the Christmas period and the first three weeks of January. So on the back of that. I had quite a slow February in terms of money in, but as I say, I've got a really, really good March, so if I have my second best month ever in January, I'll probably beat that this month in March in terms of money in, um, but February was like, you know, not very much in terms of money in, but obviously productive in terms of selling new stuff, which will filter through into March, which yeah. is good. Um, obviously, I'd done that birdie house deal, didn't I, which I was very pleased about. Um, it was a three-bed semi in birdie house in Edinburgh, mm -hmm. non-standard construction. Got it sort of last summer, I think, the lead. There was a tenant in it. The woman just wanted rid of it. They paid like 30 grand for it. Um, husband, unfortunately, passed away. Uh, she didn't want to manage it. She just wanted it out of her, out of her hair. So we, we bought that for 100,000. Um, 
because it was non-standard, we didn't want to go and spend loads of money on it. So we bought it for 100,000. I had it on right move the same day through my estate agency. Um, we accepted a verbal offer that night. The guy's brother came out and seen it the next day. And then we had the formal offer on the Friday, which was two days later, um, 157,000 pounds. So bought it. It's unbelievable, isn't it? It's crazy, mate, isn't it? Like, bought it for 100, sold it for 157. Um, and the whole deal took five weeks and two days from buying it to cash in the bank completing. So it completed very early January, which was a good start to the year. So I think we, <laughs> we netted like 47 and a half grand profit from that mm -hmm. after all fees, um, which was really good in five weeks. So to tell me... That's a total... Well, it's just a one-off deal. Well, do, that, do you know, but you're, you're really good at structuring deals I, like that, aren't you? I, 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 I think about it, right? So I've got this Kirk Liston one that I mm -hmm. bought last year as well. Um, that completes at the end of this month. Took me 13 months to buy it because it was in probate. Took me however many weeks to refurb it. Went on the market end of December, start of December. No offers, changed agent, because I don't have ESPC, which is really big in Edinburgh. Changed agent to, to someone that I know really well. Managed to get an offer on it and it's sold, thankfully now, under offer. It completes the end of this month. But that's probably like a two year long project, just about, yeah, yeah. for the for less money than what I would have made on this one. So if I think about that one, that one was Home Report 165, we paid 110 for it. Say we're in for 120, roughly including all costs there. I should have just sold that back on at oh, 165. Yeah, yeah. No, I, know what you mean. I should have just sold it back on for 165 and not had to fuck about with the trades guys and spending 38 grand we spent on it. Yeah. Um, so we, the Home Report done up was 210, so we accepted an offer a little bit less than that. Um, I don't want to say too much to it completely. Obviously, um, don't do what I done when I'll <laughs> <laughs> start singing about it. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that one will go through at the end of this month. I've got lots of good deals and that's completed for clients. I've got three completions coming up on Friday one estate agency, two client mm. deals, um, and things are moving really well to be fair. So, you know, I'm just structuring things in, in clever ways and, and, and doing what I always do, really. Mm -hmm. um, change my marketing guy, we'll have to see how that pans out. Um, and we'll just have to see what, what comes. I'm really excited about this year, though. I feel like, for me this year, my, my main focus is just focusing on getting properties in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of funding, I'm completely sorted with that. In terms of clients, I'm completely full for one-to-one -one clients. I just onboarded one last week there, um, which will completely fill me out. Um, I've got the fill me out. It's a bit fucking <laughs> sketchy. <laughs> um, I've got four and a half, five thousand people on a mailing list. I've now got the estate agency as well. All the exits are there. I just need to focus on getting properties in and how, how I'm going to do that. You know, marketing, um, speaking to people that, 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 that I work with and then obviously working with people in the property source and network community as well just to get access to these deals. So mm -hmm. should be a really good year. Definitely going to be my best year ever. Yeah. Um, some of the numbers we're pulling out stuff is crazy. Yeah. So just long may it continue, really. Definitely. We'll, we'll probably do a podcast about that because I, I feel like that's your best skill set. Um, that's why you get called Mandate Man. <laughs> <laughs> but I no, it's definitely. I think a lot of people in the group will know that how the be match structural thing, structural things and, and stuff like that is really clever. Um, and it's no, it's it's sort of what we do and what we sort of try and teach and stuff like that as well. But there's definitely a. A skill set to it, it. it. It's just it's it, not it, just as easy as saying that's what you do. There are uh, so many moving it, parts to it at it, times. It, like we were speaking about the other day with, with, with Alex on the two to one call, it's all about sales, isn't it? Like right. we don't really consider ourselves salesmen, but if you think about it, it's all to do with sales, everything right. in property, isn't it? It's all about building relationships with people and all about sales. So that only really comes when you've been doing it a while and you're confident. Yeah. And obviously I've been really lucky to meet some some really, really experienced good guys that have showed me how to do things, like me? you know. And well, not so much, but <laughs> actually, do you know what's interesting is the, the first ever deal that, that, that we done, I'd, I'd never done that structure before, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is really interesting. So you've kind of seen the, the A to Z process of me from when I didn't aye, know aye. what I was doing to what I am now. But no, lots of guys that have been doing this a long time that, that I'm you know, really friend, friendly with that just that, that have yeah. opened, opened my eyes to what's possible. So that's me for the year, really just trading stuff, not interested in, in, in buy to lets at the moment just because of... Um, you know any good deals we take away from buy to lets to keep yeah. it's just it's one less for my client it's exactly. just building a, a lot of people from. always I get asked that quite a lot like why do you not just take yeah. the deals and you're kicking on a bit now though so you better start thinking about your future soon that's <laughs> 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 not going to buy us five bed in Greenock <laughs> For your pension, mate. Bye, 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 bye for our pension. Aye. I've, got, I've got youth on my side you're kicking on like yeah. <laughs> um, aye, that was another one I, I don't know if, that's why I didn't mention it 
because I don't actually know if I'm going to buy it or not, because it was going to be one of the Emir's ones, get, right. get much higher rent. What, what would they pay on a five bed? Yeah, 15 hundred. So, it, would they take five beds, but they don't take four beds now? Is that the chat? I'm not sure, to be honest. They don't take fours? I don't, it's different contracts though, isn't it? Ah, I suppose, but they've told me that they don't take four beds at no. all. So that 920 one, I had, we've got one illegals for a client, that would have been really good, but luckily the, the seller was going to buy something and then pulled out. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping by the time that we actually buy that, the four bed contract's back in. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll still be a really good deal. Comes and goes, doesn't it, the contracts? Like it's to do with the funding. So come, come April, new financial year, I think probably they will reintroduce ah, it, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm guessing. Yeah, but um, no, I mean the 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 estate agency stuff's been keeping me busy as well. So and property social network just to, to fill the gaps. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, gaps. No, do you know what I mean? It's like feel that never a wee fee. I know, <laughs> genuinely. The amount of fucking miles I've done on my car, no. I'd be as well renting a fucking flat in Glasgow, mate. I think at this rate, or moving in with you in the spare room. <laughs> <laughs> I've just taken out an office as well, haven't I? Taking the office, aye. In Glasgow. In Glasgow. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, I'm yeah. obviously based based East Coast, I'm in yeah. so I'm, I'm over quite a lot. But I think that kind of wraps up us and in, in, in the property Aye. source and network aspect of it. So like we said, we, we just want to do something different with this podcast, but we're trying to, to just um, stand out for the crowd, if you know what yeah. I mean. So w where are we sitting here, David? What's what's the chat? Uh, I so like I said before, this is Kilmore's. Um, about five, ten, five minutes for the town, probably. Um, so classed as a kind of semi-rural cottage. By helicopter, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it's going. It's not that far. Middle of nowhere. But, um, my store. <laughs> Stay in your shop right there. My, my dad's grabbing you up and says, don't think you'll get rid of this. <laughs> no garden space. Oh, I know, I know. Money um, pit. <laughs> <laughs> Money pit. Look at this. Aye, so basically, this one, we bought... Just before Christmas, again, we always seem to buy ones just before Christmas. It's not a bad time of year to buy stuff, though. I know, but the size of this, so basically when we done that commercial to residential in air, we thought, brilliant, we got keys just before Christmas. Um, we go in, we can start stripping out during Christmas holidays and all that, but nothing really happens. You think that's going to happen, it doesn't Aye, happen. And then we project managed it ourselves, and then we made some changes to the planning. So that means having to wait and stuff like that. So it wasn't actually until we were we were sort of anticipating July, August we finished that. It wasn't until October, November. And then Liz Trust made that announcement when it was on the market, the property market fell off a cliff. Yeah. Um and we were shitting ourselves with obviously investors' money and stuff like that. The investor was absolutely brand new, we, we, don't get me wrong. But you're getting close to Christmas and then you're thinking, right, if it doesn't sell now, you're probably waiting till February before you probably get, you know, because that was a GDV of Five two five five two five for both properties, a five bed townhouse and a one bed flat. Um and then um, this American buyer just came from absolutely nowhere and offered on both. They viewed it, they sent their son to view it, but they were over in America. The son fed back to them, they put an offer of five fifty um on the Monday when the solicitors opened. So cash. twenty five cash. Twenty five grand over like, the combined home yeah, report. And here. we had literally like no one else, you know what I mean? That, that's what happens, but isn't it? No, People yeah, say yeah. you just need one buyer and no, it's no. so true, isn't that Kurt Gluston when I didn't have a fucking an mm -hmm. offer on the table at yeah. all? Um, and you start to doubt yourself, don't you? You're like, oh, was, you this, do. was, was you this even a good deal? And then you start that? to look at things like, we were looking at the photos, and we were looking at all sorts of different, we were looking at, you know, and you were like, start blaming should, we the agent. Ah, <laughs> should we change the agent, should we do this, should we do that? And then, to be fair, like, the agent worked his magic, like, once we actually got them in, because I remember, I was, I was at football, and to finish football, and I was like, um, he'd phone me and says, listen, they're interested. And I'm like, yeah, going to just tell them we want home report. Because like, he's quite big on his negotiation. His skill set is negotiating to get them over home report. That's what he kind of prides himself on, right? Yeah. And I'm like, he's like, listen, listen, chill out. This isn't my first rodeo. I'm like, going to just fucking take home report, man. We need this gone before Christmas. He's like, chill out. <laughs> so I'm stressed up to but the eyeballs, You start man. shitting yourself, don't you? Because Aye. if they pull out, you're like, fuck, Aye, I can't exactly, go through right? this again. Do you know what I mean? But so. honestly, it went through, went through in like four weeks, man. It was unbelievable. Class, and obviously, he, he, whatever he said to them, they then put that 25 grand over home report combined, you know? So I'm actually sitting here shivering, you know? It's, it's fucking, fucking reason enough. Take me for rodeo this again. <laughs> Been the podcast. <laughs> um, so, aye, sorry, jumping back. So, we actually sourced this <coughs> by. What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 this fucking project, oh, right, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so, 
I, I sourced this by <laughs> talking at the Scottish Property Podcast, right? So they asked me to go and speak as a guest for sourcing and stuff. So I was doing like a sourcing mini masterclass thing, Is right? Because I was unavailable or something. <laughs> I mean, you were there, thing then, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We've only a night on then. <laughs> um, so, we are from here. You were speaking at the podcast, right. the boy reached out speaking to you. Speaking at the podcast, and he, the, the guy was there. So, the, the guy, he, he wasn't sharing this, but he was basically sharing it for the family. So, done my thing. He messaged me the next day and says, look, I've got this property in Kilmore's. I don't really know what to do with it. I'm thinking about de- developing it. I'm thinking about selling it. He wasn't really sure what, what, he, what, was, what he was going to do with it, but he says, come and have a look, because I think, you know, if we do say, you and you, 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 your investors, your network and stuff, it might be, might be dead beneficial. Mm-hmm. So I went and seen it, and obviously, right away, your eyes light up, don't you? It's like, Mind well, what, what, mate. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you'd have shot yourself. I would have put the option. <laughs> <laughs> the the option. Nah, I would have looked at it and says, what is it, a fucking primary school or something like nah, that? I, nah, not for me. Well, Way I, too I, complex. I, I, like, I, I like stuff like that. So. No, no, no. Yeah, well, I like I like sourcing it. I like getting the investment, and then as far as the refurb goes, I'm no, it's no my no my thing. Do I pass the keys over? But um, I so basically we went and done some research, due diligence, all the usual stuff, agents, and there's obviously a lot more involved in this one, just given the kind of size of it and try to get the GDV out of it and and stuff like that. So have you said what it is? It's a, I'm just about to go into that, so <laughs> it's, that I, it's basically, it's a, right now it's a kind of two bed f- cottage. Um, is it not three bed? It's, it's, it's actually two bed. Is that a lounge? Is this a lounge? This is, this is a, this was the lounge. Right, okay. And the two bedrooms next door, right. the kitchen and the dining room. Yeah. So what we're going to do in, through there in the dining room. Shed. What? The, the dining rooms will be shed, but. No, there'll be extension bit of there. Yeah, is, extension, is that what you're calling <laughs> <laughs> So what we're going to do onto that is actually put a 16 square metre extension onto that. So right. that totally will take that wall down. It'll become an open plan lounge kitchen. Nice, mate. Um, there's going to be two big, there's going to be a big fireplace. There's going to be two big windows. They're bifolding. Well, we're not doing bifolding because it's too much it. money. Aye. Patio doors. <laughs> we'll put something like that in. Um, and then it's going to be overlooking the river. But yeah, so that's going to then make this an official three bed. So it's going to be a three bed cottage when we're finished. Um, Aye, brilliant project to, to do. It's just something a wee bit juicier and a wee bit better than your sort of usual vanilla flips. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like my vanilla stuff, mate. So do I. I, I, I like love them. I, I really like it, but I, I, like getting, I like getting into something I, like this. I like a good night's night. sleep, I always say. So something like this with the fucking big holes in the wall, black stuff and all that, windows needing done, roof. Nothing nah, wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> just paint over it. <laughs> bit of filler. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Aye, the roof's knackered as well, mate, isn't it? Full new roof on it? No, a roof. <laughs> <laughs> I've been bamming him up about this roof. It's, it's absolutely fine, but yeah. if it was me, I would be replacing it. So, so <laughs> in terms of the, um, in terms of this, and what's the sort of high level numbers on it? What did you buy it for? Um, we bought it for what did we buy it for again? Two hundred and forty. Thousand, no, 140,000, sorry. I've got to say, man. Oof. I thought I knew these numbers off the top of my head. So, <laughs> 140, it's, it's valued at 180, I think. Bought it for 140. Uh, we're going to... Do you have to pay a stamp on this? I Did you? Aye, aye, aye. What was it like before? I've only ever seen it when it's been like this. <sighs> Pretty much like this. Was it carpets and kitchen and bathroom? There was carpets and stuff like that, but the owner took them out for us. Oh, really? That's aye. happened to me a couple of times. Oh, I don't know. Aye. Don't need to do that. Do you? I don't know. I don't know. But... Pff. They no. Idea, eh? no, no, hundred percent. So, hundred forty thousand. Um, the fully investor funded for the acquisition, nice. so they'll take a first charge right. over the property and a personal guarantees that they've got as well. Um, so yeah, the refurb will probably be fully investor funded as well. So we've got pretty much eighty percent of of the refurb costs as well. Right. So somebody in the group as well is oh, got involved in this. For, from um, the property sourcing network? Yep. Really? Yeah, somebody yeah. somebody's getting get involved for the refurb. So we've got the one investor. I like to do just one investor for the acquisition. Give them first charge. Give them all the securities they want. Yep. And then I'll either use my money or get other money for the refurb. I think that is so, the easiest way to do it. A lot of people get too caught up in getting the fixed return in and then, you know, having to spend the money. But even Aye. for a project, like, you don't need to take it into your bank. Even nah. if you have a project, nah. you get them just to get a solicitor involved and everything just goes through the solicitors. Solicitor. You don't even yeah. need to see their money. Yeah. Um, give them first charge, give them personal guarantees, give them floating charges, give them anything because 
If they're giving you 150 grand or 200 or air, we get 330 grand off an investor. Like, give them everything they want because nah, they're funding it. Do you know what I mean? It's a yeah. lot of money. And um, it just keeps them secure. If shit hits the fan, they'll get the property. It's no going, do you know what I mean? But at least they're secured just in case. Aye, that's it. That's the way that I've always done things. Obviously, you know my setup with, with funding and stuff like that. But I, I, I would never, don't think I would ever be one of those people. Maybe now, to an extent, because you've got a good deal flow and you can and roughly expect it, but probably wouldn't still. I would rather just get the money for a on deal basis. Like something comes in, okay, this is a really good opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Let's let's do it rather than get a hundred grand and pay the person probably what ten, twelve percent a year yeah. now, realistically with interest rates. I don't think anybody would do it for eight. No. Um, just let's just pinky money for eight 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 percent um, with the interest rates the way they are, and then scramble about have to buy things. I, I think in my opinion, I know some people do make a success of it, but that's when you end up buying the wrong thing, I think, because... I, I, I agree. I, w I wouldn't say no to it, by the way. If somebody, like, in my position, I think, you know, I I'd be able to make Aye, use of that money work. pretty quickly, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. But a lot of people, what I've seen it before, which, by the way, it still isn't... I wouldn't say it's the wrong thing to no. do. I would just say it's, it's probably more riskier, totally. especially if you've not got the deal flow and you've not got the network, yeah. and somebody's saying, I'll give you 100 grand, Aye. and you go like that, brilliant, you take 100 grand, <laughs> six months later, you've still not got a deal, yeah, and you're like, I need this guy, you know, 10 grand or 12 grand back at the end of this year, all. do you Aye, know what I mean? Totally. So, and then you need to, you, 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 That's what you I mean. definitely need to get a flip with that, because a flip stressed. has to cover 12 Aye. grand of their interest by the end of the year, no. so that's 12 grand off your first flip, the rest is all profit, so you're probably looking at two projects, easily, and plus. And how, how are you doing, how are you doing two projects with 50 grand a piece and six months a piece? Yeah. What, no. what, you have to bridge something? Bridge and then the fees and all that, they come out, so. And by <laughs> this is the, I, we don't mean to sound negative, this is just the reality, this is how we, we ah, talk quite a lot. Me, it's I'm just a negative guy. guy. <laughs> I'm only bastard as well. <laughs> <laughs> but this um, is definitely the reality. It's not just, just as easy as taking hundred grand no, and then no. happy days. You've just got to, you know, you've. Do you know, what, I was just thinking about it there, right? See if somebody for the for the property social network groups funded this deal for you. They will fund it. Fund you part of the refurb. Part of the refurb, right? Okay. We should really, we should really sit down and work out how many actually deals we've done with people in the group. How many co sources? How many deals we've bought off people? How much different kind of deals have been done within the group? Yeah. It'd be so hard to do that, but. That would be a cool stat. Definitely. Cameron, there's a job, job, job for Monday, mate. On <laughs> <laughs> so, I, like, back to numbers. So, Aye. bought for 140, valued at 180. Um, we, yeah, fully investor funded, and the refurb will be about 100,000. <laughs> So, Heavy. yeah, yeah, aye, 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 be fine. What you guys say? 100 will not do much in here, mind. 100 for this room. <laughs> so, 100,000 refurb, and the GDV we're looking at is about 370. 370? Aye, yeah. Who Very high level numbers, obviously. There's investor interest and fees and stuff like that. Who do you think will buy it? <sighs> You're going to phone that American boy to see me. I thought that stage was back here. I'm only kidding. I think, I, do you know what? I think people disagree. People think it's got to be a family for the area and stuff, but I, Newton Mearns is only 20 minutes. I mean, I've got this thing. I just done my last flip in Newton Mearns. And I, I just, I don't know. I think somebody, a, a retired, a semi retired couple, maybe in their 50s, that are living in a 600 grand Newton Mearns house and yeah. they can move to this for 370. Yeah. 400. Yeah, yeah. Like, over home report, you know what I mean? Yeah, out in the country. <laughs> I mean. Aye, out in the country. It's semi rural, still next to motorway, still next to, motorway, still aye, next to shopping. And there's, there's a Morrison's Daily in Kilmore's as well. So, so I. That would be selling it for a reason. I mean, so. No, it's good. Yeah. I mean, it's like you say, mate, it's a really good one to get involved in this, isn't it? I'm just too much a pussy to. Well, I have to be honest, I've never had anything like this that's came in. Um, but I just like to keep things. But same, same that, like the, the one in Johnson. So the one in Johnson we're doing similar. is pretty similar. Yeah. To be fair, it's not quite as bad as this, so is no, it? No, it's not as bad. It's definitely not as bad internally as this, but yeah. it's still a big sort of. What would you class that? Is that a cottage? No, no, I just would call it a big house detached. House. Big, big, big detached house anyway. So, um, that, that real brought, as I said, real brought to us. We've real had, from the group. A real from the group brought it to to myself. I had a look at it. That's spoke to, to Matt about boys. it. You pulled you pulled in a big voice. <laughs> 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 um, I Matt, you, Matt was. The, the deal you've got with your investor is, you know, you've, you've got this sort of partnership where he just funds all your projects, so they were at a bit of a loose end, and we thought, you know, it'd be a good one for us to do together, just yeah. given that it came from somebody in the group, then me and Matt have looked at it, Matt's investor, and it'll just be a kind of... Aye, it's, I mean, it's, it's some location, isn't it, in Johnson? Aye, aye. I, I don't think I've ever been to Johnson in my life before yeah. that, but 
it's like all big, massive houses all around it. It's, it's, known, it's known as like the most sought after street in Johnson or something. I think it'll do, do really well with, with whatever we decide to do with it. So mm. fingers crossed there's no, no hiccups in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. But I'm sure it'll go through smoothly. So it'd be good to, to do something with you um, in, in that regard, wouldn't it? Listen, this was my work voice, mate. I can't, I can't get out of it, man. Can we get away from you, man? Aye, 100%. Hi, so... That's pretty much it for the first podcast. Um, been been a good good laugh to be fair. That's, good, that's, that's kind of what we're, we're looking for. Aye. Something a wee bit different, a wee bit uptight at the start. Aye, start to get loosened off, it. and it's been well, a good laugh. The, in the, it. So, the more we do it, and that aye. getting group members in, guest speakers. Exactly. Obviously, we're, I think we're going to go down to Wales and see see our friend. We'll, Joe do, Lane. we'll do that at some point. Aye. So that's that's the plan. Like we're, we're going to go down. You know, we will be leaving Scotland if we go down to England or whatever, all over the UK to, to, to sort of hopefully get some good guests on it as well. Um, yeah. And yeah, like get get some members involved and some just see where we end up. Do you know what I mean? So stuff educational that, you know stuff. I mean? yes. You know, there'll be so so much we can do with this, and hopefully, it is going to be beneficial to listen to, um, to watch as well. And if you have got any um, any idea or any ideas of where we can take it, uh, or uh, if you've got uh, a good project <laughs> going on or something like that, <laughs> if you get any good projects going on, let us know. Drop us a message. Um, we'd love to come and. Pop up, <laughs> pop up, aye. <laughs> guys, so thanks very much, guys. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Sunday, Sunday, Saturday. No, it's not, not the weekend. I've got a huge big Marco Tadger. What? <laughs> He's filming us. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you can put it. Isn't it? I, 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 I thought it was going to be too small, but